here to encounter you. I challenge you to just open your heart. Lift your hands all over this building. The presence of the Lord is already here. I need you to open up your mouth and engage in your worship. I challenge you to open up. If you don't put a demand on the Spirit of God, then you will leave here the same way that you came. You have to invest yourself in this moment. You have to surrender your heart, your soul, your mind. Bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ right now so that your spiritual ears can be open and you can hear the voice of the Lord, what the Lord and the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you this morning. If you have to get somewhere and kneel down, if you got to get in the corner and get in your face, if you got to put your belly to the floor, you shouldn't care about what your makeup is looking like right now. God, we need you desperately. We need you desperately. We need you desperately, Lord. We cry out to you today. We cry out to you today. We cry out to you today for a transformation, for a transformation, for a transformation that goes way deep down on the inside and pulls out everything that is not like you, every fear that is not like you, every burden that is not like you, every disobedience that is not pleasing you, oh God. Oh God, root it out, oh God. Root it out, oh God. Root it out, oh God, in the name that is above I declare breakthrough in this atmosphere. I declare a change in this atmosphere. I declare in the name of Jesus that every worry, every anxiety, all it is rooted out right now in the name of Jesus. I declare right now by the power of the Holy Ghost that everything that has been a hindrance to every person that is watching and every person in this room, I declare that it is destroyed by the anointing. The yoke breaking the spot of our shame, the anointing the Holy Spirit, that as your children cry out before you, oh God, things are going to be broken, chains are going to be broken off, oh God, we come before you, holding nothing back, holding nothing back, holding nothing back, oh God, holding nothing back, oh God, because we desperately need an encounter with you, oh God, we desperately need an encounter with you, oh God, we desperately need an encounter with you, oh God, more than We take advantage of the fact that you are in the room and we humble ourselves before your presence, oh God. 
inspirational God every day, every day, every day, every day, God. There are things that are only going to be broken in you and honor. You have to come to that place of desperation. You have to come to that place of pressing. You have to come to the place where all you want is Him. And there's nothing outside of Him that you desire. And there's nothing that you desire more than Him. Father, put that Father,
Little children, you are of God, you belong to him, and have already defeated and overcome them, the agents of the Antichrist, because he who lives in you mm -hmm. is greater, yeah. mightier than he who is in the world. Yes. We talk about the victory that belongs to the children of God, but unfortunately, probably less than 15% of the body of Christ is living in this type of constant victory. Come on. Mm -hmm. Either God is a liar or there's something going on with us. And we have to be honest enough to be able to look in the mirror and confront ourselves, yeah. confront our hearts, yeah. confront our attitudes, confront our perceptions. Especially for people that are in the fivefold ministry. Yeah. Yes. Because being yes. in a fivefold ministry does not exempt us right. from the dealings of God. If anything, yes. it makes us more accountable more to the dealings of God. Why? Because we have people that have been entrusted to us and we cannot lead them yes. in grace and truth if we're not dealing with ourselves in grace and more importantly in truth. Amen. Amen. So we are quick to say and make people excited by saying, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Yeah. And people get excited. But when people walk out there to that door, they do not experience that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And they're getting their backside kicked by the enemy yes. on yes. every hand. Yeah. Yes. He's kicking your tail at work. He's kicking your tail at home. He's kicking your tail when you're in the grocery store. He's kicking your tail when you're wherever you may be. Why? Because somewhere there's a disconnect. And if I am not responsible to say, this is what's happening and this is what he showed me as I was in his face all day yesterday and last night and this morning because I want somebody to like me, then I will be at home. Yes. And I'm sorry, I'm not going there for you. Yeah. Yeah. To live in constant victory, we have to recognize where defeat was birthed. We're talking about victory being the only option. Right? Yes. Where was defeat birthed? You have to go back to the garden and say and understand that sin stole our authority and our victory. Sin stole our authority and victory. You have to know this and you have to understand this if you want to live in a place where victory is the only option. Because trust me, right now, you're living in other options other than the options that God has set aside for you. Right. Hallelujah. But the revelation of the word of God is going to bring you into a place where that, that, that hindrance is broken. So you can live in a place where all you do is go from faith to faith and from glory to glory. That is available to us because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Because we've been redeemed from the curse. Because we've been redeemed from poverty. Because we've been redeemed from depression and everything else under the sun. But we have to know how to exercise that redemption. You can't keep going up to the door and getting frustrated because it's locked and you have to put the right key in the lock to open the door. That's it. Come on. Come on. So the problem is not with the door. The problem is with the fact that you don't have the key and you're not activating yeah, the key on. that has been given to you in order to come unlock on. the door. Genesis 3 verse 14 to 19 says this. So the Lord said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle, more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. So the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception in pain. You shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. Verse 17. Then to Adam he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. With this type of sentence, you would think they got caught in adultery. Mm. With this type of sentence, you would think that they got caught robbing a bank. What was it that caused this curse to be placed on everybody that was involved in this situation? Simply, they did not heed the voice of God. 
They did not hear what God said. They did not heed. They did not obey. They did not listen. They did not follow through with the instruction. They did not stick to the instruction. We are living in a season and the time that the blind are leading the blind and the deaf are leading the deaf and we're in the church and everybody's frustrated because nobody has an ear to hear what God is saying and if you can't hear what God is saying then you can't obey what God is saying and if you're not obeying what God is saying then you are living in a place of curse in your life yeah. come on That's right. I told you you might not like me but I'm okay with that many of us are living in defeat simply because we're doing the opposite of what God commanded and it's not just just doing the opposite, but not doing anything at all is just as bad as doing the opposite of what God said. Amen. Hallelujah. See, this word is a word of accountability. Mm -hmm. This word is a word of challenge. Yes. But if you heed the challenge of God, I promise you, this word will be a word of elevation and victory for your life. Yes. James 4, 17 says this, therefore to him who knows to do good and does not do it to him it is sin. We want to categorize, categorize sin as everything that is external. Adultery, fornication, homosexual lifestyle, pornography, and all of those things are a sin. But guess what? Bitterness is a sin. Yes, yes. amen. Unforgiveness yes. is a sin. Yes, yes. God calling you into ministry and you fighting him and saying no to God means you are in sin because you know the right thing to do, but you're not doing it. If he told you to turn off the television and come, spend time with him and you don't do it it is a sin because you know the right thing to do yes. but you're not doing it you know the right thing to do but you're not doing it you know the right thing to do but you're not doing it so then we wonder why is it that i'm living in defeat my god the time has come to close every door because we are living in the last days Okay, for somebody to come in a school with a gun and line of people and say, if you believe in Jesus, if you're a Christian, I'm going to shoot you and kill you right here. Yeah. How many of us would deny it? How many of us for our own life and for our own sake would say, uh-uh, not me? Out of the fear of dying because we know that we're not in right standing with God. It is a sin to know the right thing to do, but not do it. What was the situation with Adam and with Eve? They were given an instruction. And God said to them, do not eat of the fruit. If you eat from the fruit, you will die. But we want to act like we have a choice when it comes to obeying God's instruction. We want to act like it's an option. I have a free will and it's an option. Choose ye this day who you will serve. It is up to you if you live in blessing or... That's it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a personal choice. The man of God can come and give you the word every Sunday. But if you don't make some choices in your life to say, I'm going to do something differently with the help of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to walk according to the word that has been revealed to me. If you don't make some personal choices about yourself, then you are going to continue to live in the defeat that you're living in. Right. Amen. Yes. Because there has to be a personal investment. There has to be a personal responsibility. And this is coming from someone that ran from the call of God for many, many, many years. And I don't say it with any shame. I say it thanking God for the grace that he gave me to finally embrace the call of God in my life. To realize that all the success and, the, and, and, the, and everything that I was looking for was sitting right in the center of God's will. And out of my own ignorance and my own fear, I did not want to walk it out. Why? Because I didn't feel like I could do it. Yeah. What if I'm not good enough? What if I really can't preach? What if I'm not smart enough? I don't like women pastors. Why are you asking me to be a woman pastor? I've been a pastor child all my life. This is not what I want to do. This is, I want to be a singer. I want to do this. I want to do that. That's not what I want to do. And I'm running the opposite way of what God has commanded why? Because the word of God says to us in Psalms 139 that even when we were in our mother's womb, every day that would be before us is written in this book. That means that there is a plan with your name yes. on it. Yes. And it is your job not to create your plan, but to discover the plan that God has for you. Yes. yes. Well, I'm not a pastor. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be a minister. That does not take away from the fact that God decided that you would be alive in this generation. That God decided that you would be here for this moment and this time. God decided that the gifts and the talents and the glory and the virtue and the power of God and the anointing that he placed in you 
world is needed for this season, for this generation, and for this time. So you are doing your generation a disservice by continuing to walk in your own path and not to just fully surrender to say, God, I will do what you told me to do. So unknowingly, we are stopping every blessing that God has for us because we refuse to do what he's told us to do. Your tithing is not going to make you blessed if you're living in disobedience to what God said. Come on. Hallelujah. That's right. Your giving is not going to fix it. Your volunteering at your church is not going to fix it. You're serving your pastor. And, and, and those are all things that God may have told you to do. But if you are not heeding the voice of God and doing what God told you. And I'm not just talking about ministry related things. There are people sitting in this room right now that God has told you to yes. write a book. And you haven't even started to write it because yes. you're afraid to fail. He has told you to start a business. He has told you to get your resume together and go ahead and look, go out there and be aggressive about looking for that next place of promotion that he has for you. And out of fear, you haven't done it. You hear him calling you to do it. And you're not doing it. So you're disobedient because you know the right thing to do. Your disobedience to God is sin. And it's not that God is making things fall apart. It's our own disobedience that opens the door to the enemy and allows the enemy to come into our lives. So we end up in depression. We end up in frustration. We end up in sickness. We end up in doubt. We end up in worry. We end up where our money is just not cutting it. Why? Because we have not come into a place of obedience to what God said. You think you can do it on your own. And you can fix it. And we can't. We have created little monsters in the church that feel that they're so blessed that nothing can stop them. That blessing is conditional. Hear me. The blessing is conditional. And it's based on obedience. It is based, why did Abraham have to leave his mother's house and his father's house? God said to him, I'm going to take you to a land that I will show you. He had to come out without GPS coordinates, without directions. He didn't know where he was going. And it's not like where he was going. There was a Walmart every couple miles. He didn't know where the food was going to come from. He didn't know where the provision was going to come from. And in the same way, you may have a Walmart at every street, but God is still saying to you, I need you to step out of the boat, and I need to be your everything. I need you to be in a place where you trust me. I need you to be in a place where you can start walking and stop asking me so many questions. Just walk. Yes. Walk with a praise on your lips. Yes. Walk with your yes. hands yes. high. Walk saying, God, that my will and so will be done. Yes. Yes, God. Jesus. Holy Spirit. Jesus. Jesus. Where we no longer live for ourselves, but we live for our King. Yes. Yes, God. Hallelujah. My Lord. Holy Spirit, help us to hear your voice. Yes, God. Hallelujah, God. And obey what you're saying. Obey what you're saying. Look at this. James 4, 7 to 10 says this. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. See, the fleeing is not going to happen until there is submission to God. Mm -hmm. And this is especially important for ministers and pastors. Because many times we resist God. We resist God and things that he's asking us to do. Because we don't think that it's a big deal. Or because we see it like something small. Mm -hmm. Something as small as, I need you to set aside every Wednesday and not do any business and not do any counseling and not see anybody. And I need you to go into a room and you just lock yourself in there and you don't talk to nobody and you don't look at no Facebook and you don't look at no Instagram. And I need you just to lock yourself away because I need you to have a one-on-one audience with me. And he's been telling you that for the past six months and you're so busy. You're so, I gotta go counsel this person. I gotta go see this person in the hospital. I gotta go do this. And and if this don't get done, then who's gonna do it? Because if I don't do it, then they won't get done. You know what? If Jesus ain't with you, then all of it is gonna fall apart. So you might as well go ahead and take that one day and spend time in his face like he's telling you to. Because trust me, he will bring the people that are needed to make it happen. We resist God in things because we think it's not that big of a deal. Or it's something small. 
He keeps telling you, stop making your spouse look bad when you talk to your friends. Something so small. Oh, God, it's not that big of a deal. You know, she does get on my nerves. And I mean, what's wrong with me letting my boy know? I mean, I got to talk to somebody. And God is saying, don't do that. Listen. Heed the voice of God. Because promotion comes from the Lord. And we want to be promoted in the things of the Spirit. We want our ministries to grow. We want to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. We want to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. We want to walk in the room and sing the power of God, fall down. But that means that we have to do some things internally. We have to do some things in our personal space with God. And, and this is where true victory, because one of the greatest victories that you can have is the victory over your own flesh. Yes, yes. One of the greatest victories that you can have is the victory over your own mind. Yes. The victory over your own perception. Where because of the way you perceive things, you always feel like somebody's out to get you or somebody's trying to hurt you. Ain't nobody trying to get you. You are just perceiving that because that's how the enemy is painting the picture to you. And that hinders you from being free to do what God has called you to do. All because of perception is not even real. My God, my God. But he wants us to live in constant victory so we have to submit to God so that then when we resist the devil he will free from us because submission releases power Hallelujah. same thing with Hallelujah. our wives you may not always agree with what your husband has to say he may not always be right on target you may feel like you pray more than he does but you know what if we learn how to be quiet and learn how to submit to our husband and learn how to get on our knees when we feel like he's wrong let me tell you something the God of all gods is going to step in and he's going to make sure one way or another that your husband gets it right, yes. right. so you don't have to worry about trying to fix him Yes. you can't right. hallelujah as anointed as I may seem to be, I can't. But he says, submit to God and the enemy will flee. Submit to your husband. Submission will release power. And that power will handle the situation the way it needs to be handled. According to God's will, not according to your own personal preference. Amen. Submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. We sit back waiting for God to draw near to us. But he told us, you have to make the first initiation. That's it. I went first. I gave you my son. How much more are you waiting for? Hallelujah. We're so lazy. We want God to bless us. We want God to send us money. We want him to give us favor. We want him to protect our children. We want him to send us the right spouse. We want and everything we got is give me, 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 give me. And he's saying, hold up, wait a minute. I already gave you everything that I need to give you in my son. And I've already told you that if you draw not unto me, I will draw not unto you. And when I draw not unto you, everything that is needed will be supplied. Great God. That's victory. That's it. That's next level living. Mm -hmm. That's what it looks like to go from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Yes. It's time for us to get off spiritual welfare straight up. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so serious. Glory. Yes. Great. You can't feel the urgency in my heart and in my spirit. Yes. Yeah. It is time to get off the spiritual food stamps. It's time to get off the welfare. It's time for just waiting for everything and the things of the Spirit to just be handed to you. You want to live in constant victory. There are things that you're going to have to do for yourself. You don't have to study for yourself. You don't have to fast for yourself. You don't have to seek God for yourself. He said, draw nigh unto me and I will draw nigh unto you. Submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Oh, maybe I'll go to church. Uh, I don't think I'm going to go to church. Yeah. Get it together. Mm -hmm. God has so much more for us, but we're in our own way. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. We want to be lifted, but we don't want to humble ourselves. We want favor, but we don't want to humble ourselves. Jesus. See, that's why we keep coming up, the do up to the door, and the door is not opening to us because we're not approaching the door with the right key. We're coming and we're saying, God, I want you to elevate my music ministry. God, I want you to elevate my career. God, but the things that he's asking us to do, we're not doing. So he's saying, draw nigh unto me, and I'll draw nigh unto draw you. He's saying, humble yourself, and I will exalt you. He's saying, do as I have commanded, so that the power of God that you need in order to resist the devil and flee. See, the truth of the matter is that every problem.
struggle and every situation that you face and that you deal with, it's fueled by the devil. Yes. It's not that man. Mm -hmm. It's not that court system. It's not that mother-in-law. It's not your co-workers. It is not your husband or your wife. Everything that is negative in your life is being fueled by an enemy that operates behind the scenes. Yes, and what he does is he waits for an entrance. He waits for an open door. He waits for that little bit of bitterness. He waits for that little bit of unforgiveness. He waits for you, your, your most minor disobedience to God. He waits for it. And you know how a mouse, a mouse doesn't even need a hole this big. A mouse just needs for there to be a crack this small. He ain't got no bone. He's going to squeeze his way through that little hole. And the next thing you know, he's gotten in your kitchen. He has gone through all of your food. He has infested your house. The devil is the same way. He's looking for the smallest crack. He's looking for the smallest disobedience. He's looking for the smallest spirit of fear. He's looking for the smallest open door in order to steal victory from you on a daily basis. On a daily basis. The smallest crack. This is the reason why. If you follow my ministry, you'll, you'll see that I reiterate the same things over and over again because it's the truth of God's word. When you fall short, you are, do, you are doing yourself an injustice. The longer you wait to go to God and repent for your sin, because the longer you wait, the longer you give the enemy uh, authority inside your life, and territory inside your life, and the longer he's in there, he's building up fortresses. The longer that he's in there, he's building up roadblocks. The longer that he's in there, he's messing up all kinds stuff. So it's like, as soon as you see that first little mouse dropping, you better get to Home Depot, you better get some traps, you better get some poison, you better get something up in your house, because if you don't take care of this right away, the next thing you know, you're going to have Mickey and Minnie and Minnie and Minnie and Minnie and Mickey and Mickey, and Mickey, and Mickey, and the next thing you know, they're all through your house. Why? Because you didn't handle it right away. Hallelujah. Yes. That's right. He comes in and he steals our purpose. He steals our destiny. He steals our victory. Do you not understand that there are people that are connected to you? There are people that are waiting for you to be in position. There are people that their breakthrough is in you. There are people that you will meet in this journey. That they are waiting for you to be in the right position. So that they can get the impartation of Jesus that's on the inside of you that they need. Jesus. Hallelujah. So you do yourself an injustice. And you do them an injustice the longer you wait. And you just say, God, I'm just not ready. God, I'm just not ready. God, I'm just not ready. You know what? You're never going to be ready. Yes. It is now or never. It's come to God now. Yeah. It's surrender to God now. It's submit to God now. It's walk by faith now. Hallelujah. It's do what he told you to do now. now. Well, it's Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. This mindset and this revelation can bring your life out of a, a place of stagnation. You're wondering why you feel stuck. You're wondering, wondering why you feel like you keep walking in circles. Activate this and watch God. Mm -hmm. Confront yourself. Say, God, what are the areas of my life? And even if you, even if you just start obeying little by little, you just take little baby steps. I'm here to tell you that the Holy Spirit is so faithful that He will empower you. He will empower you to keep walking. He will empower you to embrace your purpose. He will empower you. He will put the words in your mouth. He will give you the ideas for the book. He will give you the outline. He will open the doors of favor. He will put the words in your mouth. He will give you the right relationships. He will connect you with the people that you need to be connected with. Everything that you need is in him. So the more you try to do it without him, you're just wearing yourself out. Hallelujah. 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 To live in constant victory, we must return to the greater one referred to in 1 John 4, verse 4, and close off every door of sin, no matter how great or how small. John 14, 23 says this, Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, if anyone loves me, if anyone loves me, oh, I love the Lord. Oh, yeah. I love the Lord. He heard my cry and pitied every girl. I love the Lord. But if you love him, Jesus himself said, if you love me, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. Do you understand what that means? Do you remember the story in the Bible when David was trying to bring the tabernacle back? 
and they messed it all up and they had to leave the tabernacle in the house of, I believe it was Obed-Edom. Mm -hmm. And it says that while the tabernacle of God was with Obed-Edom, everything in his house prospered. Yes. Yes. Everything in his house was blessed. Yes. Everything in his yes. house multiplied. Yes. And we are walking around and we're begging God for blessing. We're begging God for abundance. Yes. We're giving all our money to the church. And God is saying, it's so simple. If you would just bring me in, I bring everything that you need with me. So you don't even have to struggle for everything. You don't even have to fight for anything. If I'm in the room, if I'm in your life, if my presence is in your house, then you don't have to struggle for anything. And it will be right there. Why? Because I bring it with me. He said, if anyone loves me, follow my commandments. That's it. Amen. Follow my commandments. Yes, God. It has to be your passion and your decision to say, no matter what it costs me, no matter how afraid I am, no matter how much I don't feel like I can do it, God, by the help of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to do whatever you ask me to do. I'm going to go wherever you tell me to go. I'm going to be diligent. I'm going to be picky about every single little tiny instruction. I'm going to be diligent about every single little tiny little thing. God, you don't want me to dress that way? Okay, I'm not going to dress that way. God, you don't want me to have that attitude? I'm not going to have that attitude. God, you don't want me to respond to my mother that way? I will not respond to my mother that way. Help me, Holy Spirit. And when you fall short, help me, Holy Spirit. Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me, Holy Spirit. Change my heart. Create in me a clean heart that I would not sin against you, oh God. To be so diligent about every instruction and everything that is said to us and everything that we are given. Oh, that there is no choice. The father will just look down on you and say, oh, see, that's my son and that's my daughter. She loves me. He loves me. He's obeying my commandment. Jesus, come on. Let's go make our home with them. Let's go live with them. Yes, God. This is not a figure of speech. This is not a story. You can be in such a place of relationship that when you wake up in the morning, you just know he's there. Yeah. Yes. And when you yes. lay down at night, you know he's there. Yes, God. And when you leave and you get in your car, you know that he's with you. You feel his presence. You feel him speaking to you. You feel him leading you. You may even have dreams and see him talking to you. You may even wake up in the middle of the night and feel him in your room. Why? Because he wants yes. to tangibly be with us. He wants to commune with us. He said that he would make his home with us. If the President of the United States sent you a letter today and said, I want to come and live at your house for the next two months before the end of my term. Whoa, man. You would get up. You would clean your house. You would get all fresh linens. Oh, no, honey. This carpet has got to go. Oh, no. These curtains have got to go because the President said that he wants to come and live with us. Yet yeah, it's still the King of Glory and the King of the Universe has said, I want to make my home in you. I want to live with you. I want to talk to you. I want to be one with you. But then we still want him to come to a dirty house. Yeah. Oh, God. My God. Jesus. He's the Jesus. king of the universe. And we refuse to clean our house. And we refuse to change the sheets. And we refuse yes, to get the stains out of the carpet. And we say, well, if you won't come, then you got to take me the way I am. Guess what? He just won't come. My God, my God. My God, my God. Jesus. I'm in a place in my life where I want him to come. I'm in a place in my life that I don't want to preach a message without him. I'm in a place in my life where I don't want to ever to sing without him. I'm in a place in my life where I just don't ever want to stand up in my own wisdom and in my own power. Because my power and my wisdom and my opinions cannot deliver anybody. My wisdom and my power and my opinion cannot take anybody to the next level Come of glory that God has called you to. Come because on. what is born of flesh will always be flesh, but what is born of the spirit Jesus. is Jesus. spirit. And that's where the power is. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord. Hallelujah. Number three, recognize the power and rightful position of Jesus for victory positioning. We got to put him back in the place of honor that he deserves in our lives. Mm -hmm. See, when you hear the voice of God and you hear his instruction, and you choose to obey even when you don't understand, it's telling God, I respect you. Mm -hmm. See, 
when you've received an instruction from your mother and you only do it the right way when she's watching but then you do what you want to do when she's not watching that means you don't really respect her and she doesn't have the position that she deserves in your life it's the same way with God we want to do the things that look Christianly when we get to church yes come on when we're in ambition amen but when nobody is looking come on yes preach help us Holy Spirit hallelujah hallelujah God Jesus hallelujah. John 14 verse 15 to 18 says if you love me keep my commandments and I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you I will not leave you orphans I will come to you God is not asking you to win in your own strength because he knows it's impossible without the Holy Spirit if you're struggling if you're frustrated if you're anxious then you're not living by faith. If you're worried, if you're struggling, if you're fighting, you could have nothing and your lights be off and still be in the perfect peace of God because you understand that that moment is temporary. Yes. Because you're not fighting in your own strength. You can have a husband that can't stand you and hates you and treats you like a dog. And you still have such a personal connection to Jesus Christ that fills you with love, joy, and peace. And makes you know that you are precious and highly favored. Yes. Because you know that you're the apple of his eye. Yes. And he's more important than the one that That's mistreats strong. you. That the love of God is just there's nothing that can separate you from that love. So that connection with him overshadows the temporary drama. Yes. of your life so if you're in anxiety and you're fussing and you're fighting and you feel like God I'm trying to do what you told me to do but I'm just struggling then guess what you're trying to do it in your own strength yes. in the presence of God and in the will of God there is peace there's no sweating and there's no struggle even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for you are with me yes, God. because for God to be with you for God to make his home in you makes all of the difference in the world yes. but it has to go beyond just being a story it has to be a reality that is, uh, that is not just here but here here so strong that we live it every day regardless of what the situation looks like so we refuse uh, to allow a negative word to come out of our mouth why because uh -uh, that's not what god said amen and i'm going to be in peace why because i checked my house why because i'm submitting to god why because i closed every crack why? Because the moment I say I'm not faithful to run back into the yes. presence of God and say, please cleanse me with the blood of your son, Jesus, purify my heart and help me get myself straight. Because I have made sure that all of those things that are in line, I know that I know that I know the Holy Spirit feels welcome in my life. And, and if I seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all other things will be added. See, all these things work together. So because I know that I've done these things in my life, I don't have to worry when I get the notice. I don't have to be anxious. Holy Spirit, lead my steps. Is there something that I haven't done that you need me to do? Is there somebody that I need to talk to that I haven't talked to? Is there a letter that needs to be written and I haven't written it? A lot of times, a victory is right there, but you haven't declared it. Yesterday, we had some complications getting to the airport. We're trying to catch the flight, and the flight was a 6 a.m. flight, and I mean, we were booking it. We were, we were like, Lord, the next flight is 4 p.m., and I'm not trying to be stuck in an airport all day long. And as we are in the security line, I promise you it was at least 5.20, and the flight left at 6 o'clock. And there were so many people in that security line. I said, Lord, I need you to do whatever you need to do to make sure that we get on this flight. I don't know what you need to do, Father, but in the name of Jesus, this flight is not only without yes. us. And I know that that sounds petty to some, but you have to realize, I knew that there was going to be a good block of time that I didn't have to change nobody's problems, I didn't have to feed nobody, that I was going to be able to get in that hotel room and just be with Jesus, and I was I was desperate to get to that place. Because if you got little babies, you know what it's like you sitting in the toilet. And mommy, I'm using the bathroom. No, mommy, I need to talk to you now. See, you don't understand. 
what it's like to try to be all up in your glory and in your presence and in the face of Jesus. And somebody's like, I'm hungry. Lord, help me, Jesus. Yes. I love my children. I do. I love them with all my heart. There's nothing that I would not do for them. But I'm desperate to go places in God that I've never gone. So that means I got to get up when everybody else is asleep. Amen. And what? 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 That makes you tired and exhausted and in the need of a lot of concealer. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So I was focused on the fact that when I get to Orlando, I'm going to be in that hotel room and I'm going to be with Jesus. Lord, I need you to hold this giant. Because I cannot, I, I don't know when I'm going to get another day like this. I don't travel as much as I used to on purpose. Because my focus is with rain, fire, church. I want the church to be strong. So man, we got on that train. And we, we were running. And we were going up the escalator. And I was like, God, thighs on fire. That's Jesus, please. I couldn't breathe. Jesus, please. And we get there. And everybody got on. I mean, two minutes to take off. And they're like, okay, come on. We just, we trying to get on there. When we get on the runway, the pilot, you my witness, the pilot gets on the thing and says, you know, it's very strange that there are certain um, numbers and documents that we have to get uh, from a certain department and we can't take off without those. So as soon as we get them, we'll be able to take off. But we please forgive the delay. And I said, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. There is an authority. There is a power. There is a constant victory that is available to us when we strive with the help of the Holy Spirit to live a holy lifestyle. When we are constantly looking at ourselves and comparing ourselves to the standard, which is Jesus Christ and his word. Not what anybody else is doing. Your standard is not what anybody else is doing because to somebody else it may be okay, but because God told you not to do it, it's a sin. So don't just go do it because who did it? Hallelujah. You find yourself in trouble. Yes. It's a personal instruction. It's a personal commandment. It's a personal place of extravagant love and extreme obedience that God is calling us to. And number four, I'm about to close. We have to connect and obey beyond the point of salvation. So we come and we get saved and we say, God, forgive me. Jesus, come into my life. But we feel like after we're saved and he saved us, from that point on, we can live our Christian life on our own terms. And that is not the truth. Because you may still go to heaven, but you will not live in the victory and in the abundance and the blessing and the favor that God purchased for you at the cross of Calvary. You will go to heaven. Yes, you are saved, but you will live broke, busted, disgusted, uh -huh. depressed, uh -huh. yes, all of the above. Yes. Why? Because you're trying to live your Christian life on your own terms. Obeyed beyond the point of salvation. Every day, what is your will? Every day, what is your command? Every day, God, what's the last? See, sometimes we're saying, well, the Lord hasn't spoken to me yet. Did you obey the last thing he told you to do? My God. Thanks. Finish that assignment before you start looking for the next one. Revelation 21, verse 3 to 7 says this, And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. The habitation. The living of God, the habitation of God, the living of Jesus Christ, the place where God and Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit live. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. It's with me. It's with you. And he will dwell with them. Yes. This is our goal. This is why we examine our hearts. This is why we're not going to follow the example of Adam and Eve and say, oh, maybe it's not that bad. Maybe I can go ahead and eat the fruit. No. Not. And he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will walk away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain. For the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha. I am the Omega. The beginning and the end. I will give. Hallelujah. 
of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes, he who overcomes, he who overcomes shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son. I pray that today you understand and you it is revealed to you the secret to living a life where victory is the only option. Yes, God. Yes. Because you're living in obedience. Because you're yielding to the Spirit of God. Because you're staying in His face. Because you're not scared to fast and pray. And you don't just fast and pray because, oh, this is my Sunday to lead worship. So make, let me make sure that I get myself together before I got to stand up in front of the people. No, you live ready and you stay ready. Yes. And you live in the presence of God. And you know that God's eyes are on you, whether the pastor's around or the pastor's not yes. around. Where there's a constant yielding to the Holy Spirit. And when you do wrong and you offend your spouse and you feel the Holy Spirit saying, you need to go back and apologize. You may have been right, but your delivery was all wrong. Go back and make it right. Go back and repent. When you live in that place, place of constant surrender, then you understand that that's when you come into the place of constant victory, that all things will work together for your good. We want all things to work together for our good, but we're not willing to make the sacrifices and the adjustments that we have to make. He said if he's able to dwell with us, he's not going to come to a sinful house. He's not going to come to a place where he's not honored and he's not respected and he's not obeyed. But when he's honored, when he's respected, when he's obeyed, then he becomes the alpha. Then he becomes the omega. Yes. Then he becomes the, the beginning. Then he is the end. Then he becomes your God and you become his son. And you will inherit all things. Why? Because you live in a place where victory is your only option. Lift your hands and close your eyes in the presence of the Lord. Jesus. Father. Holy Spirit. There's no way that you could have spoken any clearer this morning. Even for myself, God, help me. Help me. Help me to obey you. In every area, help me, oh God. Help us. Every single one of us. There's a place in the spirit that we've never been, God. And I thank you, God, that today you are opening up our desire and our want and our thirst. You said that you would give up the fountain of life to those who thirst. And this morning, we thirst for you. 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 And you promised. You promised, God. You said right now these words because they're faithful and true. So right now, let's see if we submit to you. Once again, we surrender to you. Even as pastors and leaders and ministers, once again, we surrender to you. We say, oh God, have your way. We say, oh God, we surrender every area. Oh God, Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit would come into our lives. Father God, we don't want just a little flashlight, Father God. We want that light that's like the one that's at the top of the lighthouse. Let that really, really big, bright light shine on us so that there's nothing that is hidden in the corners, that there's nothing, no part of our attitude, no part of our ungratefulness, no part of our laziness, Father God, no part of our lack of organization, no part of anything, Father God, that is not of you, God, that it would not be able to hide because the light that is shining on us is so bright that it makes us face the things that we have avoided. It makes us have to look in the, in the face of our inadequacy. It makes us have to look in the face of our shortcomings. It has, and we have to look at the areas where we have fallen short and we have disobeyed and we have dishonored you, O God. And Father God, the best thing is for those things to be exposed so that we can make them right with you. Yes, God. Yes, God. We repent of our disobedience. Yes, God. We repent of our sin. And I declare in the name of Jesus that every person that has heard this word and, and, and will hear this word, I declare, Father God, that this word, Father God, will not fall on deaf ears. I declare, Father God, that your word will go forth, Father God, and it will drill into the hearts of your people. I declare, Father God, that this word, Father God, will confront, Father, the heart of those, Father God, but it will cause them, Father God, to turn their hearts back to you. I declare that this word will not 
return void. And there will be transformation and there will be change. And this word, the activation of this word, will be a doorway to new dimensions. The activation of this word will be a doorway of new favor. The activation of this word, Father God, will be a doorway to new power in the supernatural. An open doorway to the prophetic. An open doorway to faith, of grace and favor. An open doorway to breakthrough. An open doorway to the, to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit you prophesied would come in the last days, Father God. I declare that the activation, Father God, of a spirit of obedience and submission to God is going to usher in, Father God, a revival in the last days. It will pour out your spirit upon us. And we will not live for ourselves, but we will live unashamedly for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, yes, God. we have prayed. Let him stamp this word in your heart. We can't do it in our own Holy Spirit. We need you. We can't do it on our own. We need you. It's time to live without struggle. It's time to live with no struggle. It's time to really truly be eagles and soar on the wind of the Spirit. Where everything around you can be in chaos. But because you are being lifted up by the wind of God, all you have to do is spread your wings and glide on Him. So we 